I would like to talk today, give you some introduction into this material, which we believe is not only evolutionary, but also uh, revolutionary. So in order to understand a little bit how evolutionary, revolutionary this material is, we have to look back to the beginning of the 20th century, where everything started with stainless steel. And, um, and then during the 80s, um, everybody understood that we need to shift something to a different material. And that's where uh, titanium started to be uh, used widely in orthopedics. Uh, however, if we are thinking about it, uh, the fact that we are using metals in the past 80 years or 100 years in modern uh, orthopedics does not say necessarily that this is the best raw material to come in conjunction with bone. Actually, it has quite a lot of drawbacks, for instance, high rigidity uh, compared uh, to bone, and that's why we have stress risers. Uh, it's rather opaque. We cannot see what's happening beneath the implants. Uh, it's fatigue especially when we have patients that are not healing or consolidating so quickly. Uh, it creates artifacts in modern, modern modalities like CT, imaging modalities like CT and MRI, and we have also some patients who have metal allergy, and we don't have a good solution for these uh, patients. Uh, and that's why we think that this is the stage, exactly the stage to move on to the next material, to something which is totally different than metal. It's not a homogeneous material. This is a non-isotropic material, which is composite material, carbon fiber, based on carbon fiber. Now, carbon fiber are not new. We all have, some of us have bikes, some of us have surfing boats, some of us have such uh, trucks made out of carbon fiber, <laughs> or jets, mm -hmm. OK? Uh, they're all made out of carbon fiber, no, not only because of the lightness of the material, but also because of the durability and the fatigue strengths of the material. And pretty quickly, it was embraced also by the medical industry, starting in spine with cages about 15, um, about 15 or 20 years ago. And you can see here the back cage of Zimmer. Um, the, pew, uh, the pew started with the stackable cages made out of uh, carbon fiber. So with the years, there was a lot of accumulated data regarding the safety and biocompatibility of this uh, composition of carbon fiber plus polyether ketone, which we are using in our mix. Uh, however, when we are talking about composite material, it's almost like talking about metals. You know, gold is metal. Uh, titanium is metal, even mercury is metal, but they are so different. The same is also with composite material, especially when we are looking microscopically. So in the cages, for instance, because it has to withstand, withstand compression forces, uh, the industry was using mainly chopped carbon fibers and something like 35% carbon fibers and the rest was a polymer, like PIC. However, when we are jumping into trauma, we need totally different strengths and we are exposed to totally different vectors of forces like torsional forces and bending forces. And that's why we decided to take those fibers and use longitudinal fibers. And when we are talking on such a fiber, we are talking about a very thin fiber. You can see here a human hair, which has a diameter of 70 microns versus a single fiber, which has a diameter of a tenth of a human hair. So in such a nail or in such a plate, we have billions or hundreds of thousands of single fibers in different uh, orientation. And in order to glue them together, we are using a polymer which is called PIC, polyether ketone, which is also uh, uh, well known. Now, the trick here is, and that's, what's, that's the beauty of this material, is that we have the ability to determine the biomechanical properties and the way that we are layering those fibers. And what we are doing in our implants, for instance, in our nails, the, long, uh, the core of the nail is made out of longitudinal fibers, as you can see here. And on this core, giving us good bending stability, and on this core, we are wrapping diagonal fibers in order to achieve good anti-rotational stability. And we are, do it in, we are doing it in 45 degrees two layers of 45 degrees to each other, as you can see here. And that's how we uh, gain the strengths uh, that we uh, desire. 
uh, and that's how it looks microscopically. So you can see that most of the mix of this composite material is carbon fiber, about 30% carbon fiber, and the rest is uh, peak. And that's how we produce all these uh, palette of products that you can see here on the screen, plates and nails. Um, but actually, why carbon fiber? It's, uh, you know, it's, it's hyped. It's, uh, is it a gimmick? Uh, well, it has some, some uh, advantages, which are actually all the drawbacks that we have in metals. For, so for instance, MRI and CT, no artifacts. And we realized it, especially in oncology, with one of the first cases ever that we have performed in 2010 in Germany. This is a 51 years old lady with the mama carcinom. Uh, it is a case from uh, Professor Ranger in Frankfurt. So he, and that was actually our ever first uh, product, a humeral nail. And he was inserting this humeral nail to these, uh, to these humors. So first of all, you can see that it's radiolucent. However, we are marking it with tantalum marker, so you can able to see the uh, the nail itself as well as the um, distal and proximal holes with little markers. We're using tantalum, which is a radiopac material. But what's important, especially in this cancer patient, is follow up, obviously. Now. What you're going to see now is a cross-section MRI in the level of the tumor, and you can see very nicely the nail in the middle and the white layer around it. This is exactly what we are looking for. If they would have used, as usually, stainless steel or titanium nails, that would be the image. We can spare the, uh, the cost of MRI or CT. Um, and that was... Uh, relative quickly embraced, for instance, uh, in an institute like Sloan Kettering in New York, they published two years ago this publication comparing a group of patients having uh, femoral or tibial nails uh, made out of carbon fiber versus tibial nail made out of metal, uh, and with the conclusion that the superiority of, of imaging and the fact that they can, could follow up much better recurrency on these patients who had carbon fiber nails. The same is also in spine. These are pedicle screws made out of uh, metal, and these are our uh, uh, pedicle screws made out of carbon fiber. Even though our pedicle screws do have a, a thin layer of titanium, we are doing that in order to visualize the pedicle screw itself, uh, as well as for bony integration. And I'm showing you the pedicle screws uh, because, uh, obviously, this is a number one place for metastatic lesions, uh, obviously, in the spine. And secondly, without these pedicle screws, we wouldn't have the torque nail because, actually, we embrace the technology that we developed regarding the coating uh, with this ultra-thin titanium shell on the torque nail and in order to visualize it it as well as for bony, bony integration. We have it as a short nail as well as a long nail. It's essential in radiation therapy. We'll hear a little bit more, much more uh, later uh, this afternoon for pre-planning as well as for the radiation treatment as, uh, itself because we do not have, or almost do not have, attenuation or backscattering. It has unparalleled fatigue strength. We all know it's always a race. What is going to happen first? Are we going to have healing or fatigue of the, of the implant? And especially when we are talking about oncological patient, most of the cases we do not have consolidation and all the weight is being bared by the implant itself and that's where we see fatigue. And looking at the four-point bending results of our nails, you can see that we are more or less in the middle in between, let's say, uh, companies like Zimmer and Synthes. The same is in regarding to rotational strength, and uh, the same is in our plates, but it shines, obviously, in fatigue. You can take such a plate made out of titanium, it can bounce, and it will break after 40,000 cycles. The same plate made out of stainless steel would break after 400,000 cycles. This, break, uh, this plate can bounce on the machine, not only for 1 million, 2 million, 3 million, 4 million, but much, much more and will not fatigue. This is one of the reasons, talking about aviation, why these 
airplane wings are made out of this material because it does not fatigue. Optimal modules of elasticity, um, maybe not related directly to oncological patient, but the fact that we are mimicking bone in regards to the uh, modules of, of elasticity brings us to such results, for instance, this case of a humeral fracture, and these are images three weeks post-op, and look, the amount of callus has to do properly with the properties of the material that it mimics bone regarding modules of elasticity. Radiolucency. In many cases, we would like to see what's happening beneath the plate. Very important, for instance, in foot and ankle. Very important in periprosthetic fractures. Uh, and also important when we are talking about lesion, where you're injecting cement, the fact that you can visualize, you can see the, the subject here is not the plate, the subject here is a lesion, and you would like to follow it up. You cannot do it correctly when you have a metal plate or a metal nail. And, 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 and a lot more advantages, no cold welding, removal of, of plates is uh, really easy. It's a solution for metal allergy. The surgical technique we try to do to match it as much as we can for what to what you are used to in your all-day clinic. The same is our instrumentation set. This is our truck nail instrumentation. Very, very uh, familiar uh, with what you are using uh, in metal uh, truck nails. Other products are CE, FDA marked, and we have, that you can see here, and we have a vast clinical experience in the past um, eight years already. We started in 2010 with numerous of publications, with thousands of cases. By the way, most of the cases have been done in the US. And hopefully we're going to change it now, uh, also for uh, Europe. 